בוקר טוב, ילדים. שלום עליכם, everybody. All right, let's everybody turn on their cameras and let's start our last song with some prayer, Shema, and the Ten Commandments. All right, let's start off there. Lara Land. Yeshua, you pray. Lara's do the Shema. And Hadassah does the Ten Commandments. Thank you, Lord, for this day, for giving us. And God, we could please do that we can to make you happy. And that we could do what makes you, what makes you more happy. And that we could obey in Yeshua's name. Amen. Give it out to the big finger. Big finger, Hadassa, we got the big finger. All right, good job, Hadassa. Good job. All right, let me just take attendance. See who's here today. All right, we got everybody there. Allie's in the triangle. All right, Hadassa's playing with her hair. She's playing with her big old bopsy on her tops of her head. All right. All right, so we're going to start. Um, Reading verse 11 through 13. Anybody want to read? All right, Adrian, read verse Shemot, chapter 1, verse 11 through 13. Exodus chapter 1, verse 11 through 13. They put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built for Pharaoh a storage cities of Hukum and Ramesses. But the more the Egyptians oppressed them, the more they multiplied and expanded. Until the Egyptians came to dread the people of Israel and worked them relentlessly. Making their lives bitter with hard labor, digging clay, making bricks, all kinds of field work, and all this toil, they were shown no mercy. All right, Adrian, did you do your assignment? Yeah, hold on. Give me a sec to get it. I'm sorry for not paying attention in class. I need to be more engrossed in what everyone is talking about. I need to mo show more respect by listening to what you have to say and give out my own opinions when asked. I really do need to stop making chat with my sisters in class. It's probably a good thing we're in separate rooms. Is that two paragraphs? Is that two paragraphs? Is that really, how old are you? Yeah. I guess I was also being a little lazy as well. Okay, now you get to write, now you get to write eight paragraphs. Okay, because 
Perfect example, Adrian, of what you just read. Perfect example. See, when you don't do what, what you're told, then God says, you know what? I'm going to put slave masters over them. The children of Israel were not doing what they were told. So God said, you know what? Uh, my children need a good spanking. And they need things taken away. And they need to have people not care about them when you don't want to care about God's laws. He says, okay. So let's look at some words today. Let's start what we were doing yesterday because we got to understand. What is a slave master? Let's see what a slave master is. Michael, Michael, what is a slave master? Come close to the microphone. I can hear what you're saying, Michael. It's someone that whips people when they don't, when they're, they're not working. Somebody that works with people when they're not working. I don't understand Wait, what you just said. Go ahead. When they whip you? They whip you? Okay. They whip you. Kevin, what do you think a slave master is? Say it again, Kevin, please. Person that whips slaves. Person that whips slaves. How do you get slaves, Kevin? How do you become a slave? You see, do you, do you grow up and just say, "I wanna, I wanna be a slave," like that's one that's a job description. Oh. No. Uh, Force. Slave. Say it again, please. You are forced to be a slave. Why would somebody force you to do that, Kevin? We're listening, okay. Yeshua, how do you become a slave, Yeshua? Like when, when you're working and... How you can be a slave. How you can be a slave? By, by not doing the commandments. By not doing the commandments? So God, uh... God uh, put you as a slave. You can't like grow up and say, "I, I want to be a slave." No, somebody has to force you to be a slave. Okay, Hadassah, you're waving your fingers. Um, slave means like, 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 like somebody was like. Like somebody was looking at their work, like their work is like, let's say, like somebody's working for Harvest and that, and a farm full of people um, um, working, uh, um, working for Harvest, and then they sold them, and then they took them to, to be a slave and hit them with their whip. Okay, that was very good, Dasa. What do you think? What do you think, Marley? Sorry, what? Seems as if you weren't paying attention. Now you get to write four paragraphs for tomorrow too on how to pay attention. Okay. You don't want to be here. 
if you're being forced here, maybe I should, you know, talk to your dad and, and you know, just as uh, something to do every morning. It doesn't really help if you're not paying attention. Because then you're going to become a slave. And it's really bad for girls when they become a slave. Really bad. Because God is angry with you. And you don't do what he does, what he wants you to do. God says, I'll, I'll give you <clears throat> to some demonic people. And for girls, you'd rather be dead. But if you commit suicide, you go to hell. Because that's murder of yourself. You might want to actually try to pay attention. Since the world we're living in is a really weird place right now, and it probably will never go back to the way it was. Because God is pretty mad with America like he was mad with the Jews. God said, okay, you don't want to worship me? I'll, I'll, make, I'll make you worship somebody else. You might want to pay attention. I know Shazad's there, and but you should be leading him as an example of somebody who follows Messiah. You should be an example, not a deterrent. You should want your friend to hear about our God, how great our God is. Instead of yapping your mouth. Okay, you can mute. Lev, what is forced labor? It says in verse 11, so they put slave masters over them and oppress them with forced labor. What is forced labor? What I think forced labor means is that like, they they tell you to work very hard, like how after um, Moshe showed them that miracle, then then Pharaoh made them like gather their own straw because the Egyptians used to give it to them, but now but then he I mean not now, but then he said. You gather your own straw. That was forced labor because he's making them do like, like more. Is it optional? It's not optional. You won't not get optional. It. Not optional. You can't take a day off. No. Yeah. You don't they get. Only let, they they only let slaves sleep for only, I guess, four hours. Hey, one second, let me help Allie. Well. So they didn't give you like, like if you got sick, they didn't give you any days off. And when you were working, you wouldn't get any pay. Like how today, like in today's um, work, when, when, we, when people go to work, they get paid. But they didn't get paid when they were in slavery. Now, if you were a servant, then you could get a date. Then you could, because slaves were in a lower position than servants. Servants, they they would get to take days off. Okay, very good, Lev. Hold on a second. Hi, Yadiel, Yadiel, what does it mean to be oppressed? There's the word O-P-P-R-E-S-S, -E oppressed. You said oppressed? Oppressed, it says, you put, so they put slave masters over them 
to oppress them. What do you mean to be oppressed? Like um, to, to be forced to do something hard. Why would somebody even do that to you? Because uh, they were forced to. I know they were forced to. Hold on a second. Let me unmute it. I think Allie's here, but she's not here. Allie, can you hear me? Okay. So, why would somebody oppress you? You, know, you seem like a nice kid. Why would somebody oppress people? Because, like, when you're forced to do something, like you, like you have to do it. Like, if you, if you, like, if you don't do it, like something mm -hmm. bad happened, or you didn't get something taken away. Say that again, audio. Like, um, if you're like, if you, if you're forced to do something, like you can't, you can't, um, you can't, like, you, you're forced, you like, you, you can't do nothing about it. Like, if you're forced to, like, and if, if you're, if you're not gonna do, if you're not gonna do it, um, like something bad can happen to you. You mean they could whip you and beat you and treat you any way they wanted, and you couldn't do anything about it? Like if you're, yeah. That's not nice. Why would God allow that to happen? Like maybe he wanted to see your trust in God. Wants to see your trust? Yeah. <clears throat> so he's making you a slave? How's that going to make you trust God? He's just seeing. He's seeing if, if you're going to trust him. Victoria, what do you what do you think, Victoria? What is the what is oppression? Um, I think it's like it's like when someone is kind of taking advantage of a person and using them as like a slave. Taking them and using them as a slave? Why would somebody do that? Because some people are just unjust and they, I guess, don't care about others. How does that happen? How can somebody, how can somebody turn out to do that? Like, you know, don't they know that that's wrong? Well, it depends by, like, who took care of them. Because if it was someone, like, like evil and bad, then he wouldn't care. You mean they grew up like that? Somebody taught them to be like that? Someone can do that, but he can also just be like that when he like grows up and leaves his parents. And then like his friends start doing bad things and he thinks it's okay. He thinks it's okay to be a mean person. That's interesting. Okay. And so Victoria is telling us a, a person is thinking it's okay to be a mean person. Okay. Now we're going to go to verse 13. And they work them relentlessly. Relentlessly. Riet, what does the word relentlessly mean? Relentlessly. R E L E N T L E S S L Y. Relentlessly. Riet. I guess it's like um, nonstop, no matter if the if the person's like if they're ill, if um, if they they maybe if they may leave the broke a bone or something, or if they um, if they're tired. They um, work them still very hard, 
regardless um, of the, the struggles they are, they are they have. Okay, that's very good, Rayette. Because Shazad, why why would somebody do that? To, why would somebody do that to another person? Why would somebody make somebody else a slave? What would be going on in their brain, man? Um, they might make somebody a slave because they don't want to do like hard work. So they make somebody a slave. They they don't pay them. They <clears throat> they make them work when they're sick. They beat them. That's that's okay to do. No. Why 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 did they do that back then in, in the Bible? And you know what? It's happening around the world today. No. Why would somebody think that? Why would people like today in the world think that that was okay? What do you think? Oh, I mean, if they do that, they're probably just a trashy human. I'm going to put the microphone a little closer to your mouth. Well, I mean, if they do make a slate, make somebody a slave, they're probably a trashy human being. Well... Yeah, I agree with you there, man. Well, how does somebody become a trash human being? Like, how does that happen? You know, like, I don't want to, I don't want that to happen to me. How does somebody become a trashy human being? What are the things I'm to look for? Well, I mean, like, if somebody does something that, like, other people just absolutely hate, but they just keep doing it because they think they're, like, they're just right. They think they're just right. Maybe they don't yeah. think. Maybe they, those people who are the slave masters yeah. don't don't think that person is even a human. That happens, Shazad. What? Uh, somebody think that you know another person's not even human. Maybe. Wow, that's amazing. You think you could do something like that? Probably not. Probably not? Not 100%? You can, like, there's a little percent that you can say, you know, that person's really not a human? I mean, no. Okay. Riyadh, got your little fingers up. I see, I see your fingers. Well, it's like how Hitler treated the Jews. Um, the they um he he didn't treat them like they were humans, and um, he and um he made them work hard for them. But uh, <clears throat> and the, um most of them died. How how did he get everybody to kill kill all those people? How did he get them to murder? Did those people look like humans? Yes. Did those people speak the same language? Well, yes. They they had to learn the they had to learn that language. Well, most of the Jews were living there in Germany already. Yeah. So they, were, they were German people. They were born and raised in Germany. Marley, yeah. I'm gonna kick you out of class in a second. Sorry, he asked me a question. What was the question? Well, why wouldn't they be able to communicate? No, they would. They were all German. <laughs> no. You know, because Riyadh was talking about the, the Nazis killing the Jews. The Jews were already in Germany. They were, they were born Germans. They were German people. They were speaking the same, same language. How can somebody think that that person that grew up right next door to you was not a human anymore? What do you think, Shazad? I don't know. Maybe if they were stupid. Those people were stupid? Yeah. See, it's when you don't know God. You don't believe in the Bible. You know, you, you can get to think that other people are not even human. 
You're going to do what's right for you and you alone. And that's what we're reading about here in our Bible. It's 3,000 years old. Same thing that was going back, happening then, is happening right now in North Korea, in the country of North Korea. The same exact thing. Okay. All right, let's, uh, let's move to another word. Let's bring in the little, the little kids. What is something in verse 14 making their lives bitter? Elisheva, can you tell me what the word bitter means? You know what something tastes when, when you, you say it tastes bitter. You know what that word bitter means? Can't hear you. Come back to you. Okay, bitter. Yeshua, what does the word bitter mean? Like something spicy. Spicy? Do you like spicy food? Uh-uh. I can't talk very spicy. And... What else? And the hot chocolate, when it's so hot, is is the spot. Like, hot. Okay, that's a very good, that, that's a good example. You, that's a good example, Yeshua. Let's see if we can hear Ellie Sheva. Ellie Sheva, let's see if we can hear you now. Can you hear us? Yes, we can hear you now. What, what does Ew. the word bitter mean, Ellie? Ew. Ew, it means ill. Do you, you ever taste something that said ill? Not sweet. No, not, not sweet? No. What what was something that tasted ill that you didn't like? Mm -hmm. yeah. Most vegetables. <gasps> what vegetables you don't like? Broccoli. We'll say that. Broccoli. Broccoli. Yes, broccoli is ill. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So let's see who we got here. Okay. Are we in here? Okay, so who wants to read the verse 11 through 13 again? Lev? So they put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labor. And they built for Pharaoh the storage city of Pitom and Ramses. But the, but the more the Egyptians oppressed them, the more they multiplied and expanded until the Egyptians came to dread the people of Israel and worked them recently, relentlessly, <laughs> relentlessly, making their lives bitter with hard labor, making clay, making bricks, all kinds of heat, all kinds of field work, and in all this toil they were shown no Thank you, Lev. Good read. Now, in verse 12, it said, uh, the, until the Egyptians came to dread the people of Israel. Junior, what, what, do you think, what do you think that means, Junior? Dread the people. Dread somebody. I think it means, like, when you read somebody, like, you, you could tell who they are or what they're thinking by the way they look. No, that's not dreading somebody. Oh, dread. I thought you said red. Dread. Dread. D R E A D. Oh, um, dread. Like, I think that it puts them in fear. Like, if you were to scare them in any type of way. Do you think the Egyptians were scared of the Israelites? Um, not really, but I feel like they could be maybe a little nervous if they probably revolted. Okay, that's a, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. What do you think, Allie Mae? 
What do you think the word dread, D-R-E-A-D, they began to dread the people of Israel? I think maybe that they, like not, not only did they um, fear that they were going to um, go against them because there were so many of them, but I think that maybe they kind of at the same time hated them, like not only fear them, but hate them. Fear and hate. Okay, that's a good, good uh, explanation. Mia, what do you think about this? The Egyptians came to dread the people of Israel. What do you think the word dread means? The word dread means, like, the fact that if the Egyptians dread the people of Israel, it means they were extremely afraid of them. Like, like just just the look that they were, they were a big and powerful people already. Like, with all this hard labor, they were still, like, a big group of people. But the Egyptians were scared that, I don't know, anything could happen. Or, the, the Israelites could revolt and battle them and, and go away or something like that. To dread someone would mean to be extremely afraid of them. Dread somebody means to be extremely afraid of them. Pretty good example. What do you think, Adrian? They were probably really scared. They were worried about a revolt, maybe, because there were probably so many, there was probably two Hebrews for every, for every Egyptian. You've got this massive army of slaves, and they could revolt at any moment. They could pick up and fight. They could probably, I mean, you know, just, they'd cause havoc. They could demolish them just out of sheer numbers so you're thinking they're worried about a revolt and an uprising yeah i mean thousands maybe ten thousands hundreds of thousands of egyptians could die because there were so many hebrews if they just revolted at any moment okay that's, that's a pretty good answer adrian that's that's thinking what what do you think victoria the Egyptians were dreading the people of Israel. Why didn't they just kick them out of Egypt? Well, I don't understand that part. Like, were the Egyptians scared of the people of Israel, or were the people of Israel scared of the Egyptians? The Egypt said it. It said, but the more the Egyptians oppressed them, the more they multiplied and expanded, until the Egyptians came to dread the people of Israel. Oh, so the Egyptians are scared? Why were the Egyptians scared of the, the Israelites? Um, okay, okay. Um, so the Israelites are scared of the Egyptians. Oh, oh the Egyptians are dreading the Israelites. So they're scared? The Egyptians? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, uh, what's your question? What I've been asking everybody else. Okay. Um I think that the Egyptians are scared because there were like so many of them that maybe they couldn't do anything about it. So uh, they started to become scared. Okay. All right. Let me ask Jennifer. Jennifer, Jennifer, why are the Egyptians dreading the Israelites? Why don't they just kick them out? They just kick them out. Um, Cause the, the Israelites are going very, um getting more kids and growing, like a lot of kids. But why well, well, they're, they're why growing? Then. Well, they're, they're, they're growing. They're, why are they getting afraid? Why are they getting afraid? They, they think that 
the Israelites might want to take over Egypt and take over the Pharaoh. They might want to fight them. Okay. All right. So okay. that's a good answer, Jennifer. All right. So that's a good answer, Jennifer. All right. So now we're up to this part where God is now, he's mad with the Israelites because they weren't listening because they were liars and doing lots of different things that God didn't like. So God said, you know what? You're not doing what I'm telling you to do. You're not worshiping me. I'm going to put somebody else over you. You don't want to listen to me. You don't want me to be your king, God says. And says, all right. So I'm going to put somebody else over you. And when God puts somebody else over you, he doesn't put a nice person. Something for all of you to think about. Remember yesterday we were talking about you have to pay for your the sins of your parents? Well, it's something for you to think about when you become parents yourself. When you guys grow up, I know it's hard to sometimes think that you might be grown up like you know, an adult and have a family of your own. But that's the whole idea of growing up and getting married, a boy marrying a girl and a girl marrying a boy and having a family of your own. Then a lot of times you don't follow God. You just want to do what you want to do. But God says, you know what? You don't want to praise me. You want to play your video games. You don't want to work. You don't want to follow the commandments. So God says, you know what? I'm going to lock you in your home. I'm going to not let you go outside and go play. I'm going to not let you go to the park. I'm not going to let you go ride your bikes down the, down the street. I'm not going to let you go to school. Well, you said, well, yeah, I don't let you go to school. Yeah, well, that's only going to work for a little while. Because then there's no food. But God says, I'm not going to feed you. And there's going to be no food at the store. There's nobody's. Well, even if there was food at the store, you don't got any money because you're not working because you're locked in your house. So God said to the Israelites, you know what? You don't want to follow me. Um, I'm going to put this feeling in the Egyptians like they're going to like, ew, that's an Israelite. So God said, I'm going to put slave masters over you. So you now, now, now you're not even going to have a, you're going to have a job and you're not going to get paid. But you, you can't say I'm going to stay home. No, because they're going to come and rip you out of your home. And I'm going to make you work. Well, I'm not feeling well. I'm tired. I don't want to work. See that whip? Look at the picture, everybody. And the guy's got the whip. They're going to whip you. you yeah, Adrian's going to whip you. Because if you don't pay attention, that's what's going to happen. Okay? It's going to happen to everybody. No matter if you're old or young, boy or girl, they're going to whip you. And it says they work them relentlessly. That means, you know, you, you guys think it's, it's a lot of work to work five hours a day. Imagine working 18 hours a day and not getting paid. Not being able to take a lunch break. I'll be able to go to the bathroom when you want to go to the bathroom. And it said there that made their lives bitter. Look at verse 14, making their lives bitter with hard labor, digging clay, making bricks, and all kinds of field work. All this toil, they were shown no mercy. What does it mean to be shown no mercy? What does the word mercy mean? Mia and then Yadiel. No, let me go to the young, young one first. Let me go to Yadiel first. What does the word mercy mean, Yadiel? Let me unmute uh, you. Go ahead, Yad. Like if God, my my little sister, my grandma, she said if God gives you mercy, she, like they're giving you air. Giving you air? What? What do you mean? I thought the air just. <sighs> well, God could take over the air. You're right. He could. What What else do you think it means? Because air air is kind of hard because it's like. Can you hold air in your hand? Um, you go, you go, like hold it in like something that sealed shut. But you can, I don't think you can hold it in your hand. Can you put air in a bottle? 
Yeah. How do you see the air? How do you know the air is in the bottle? Because, like, um, if there's air in a bottle, like, and you close the lid of the bottle and you try to squeeze it, there's you can't you can't squeeze it if it, because there's air in it. How do you know there's air in it? Can you see the air? No. You know, if you does the air stay in the bottle when you open it? Um, like. Yeah, it'll stay in the bottle, but if you crush it with a lid open, it'll, like, if you crush it with a lid open, it will, um, like, come out. All the air will come out. How do you know it came out? Can you see it coming out? No, like, the air inside of, the air that was inside of it uh, will, like, come out when you squeeze it. How do you know it's all out? Like, when you squish the bottle fully. You mean it's 100% gone? Probably. Probably. Okay, that's a pretty good answer. Um, I still need to know what mercy means. Me and mercy. It means to be compassionate towards someone. In other words, being kind towards them. In this I mean, context here, the, the Egyptians were not being kind at all to the Israelites. They weren't even showing any kind of like, this kind of, Feeling bad, feeling. You they didn't feel bad, bad like. Why, yeah. would they, why would somebody do something like that, Mia? When we don't want to listen to the Lord, he gets us to some bad people. And the Lord allows, he moves on their hearts. Um, he moves on their hearts, whether, and um, gets into their mind. And then God pretty much controls them, I guess you could say. That allows for them to have power over us. And they can treat us the way they want to. Isn't that mean, me? In some people's eyes, yes. In other eyes, it may be unjust. And still others may think, well, it's just towards the Lord. Because we didn't want to listen to him. So what's the big, what's the whole problem? It, I mean... Why waste time with people who don't want, with who don't want to listen? And like this is God's eyes, pretty much. Why should I waste my time with with people who don't want to listen to me? I'm gonna have to send. Like they might be able to listen with these people. They'll have to listen. They'll have to work. Okay, very good, Mia. Lev is waving her hand, and I love I love pizza shirt. Hmm. Well. Well, I I want to say an example about um mercy, because let's say a person gets into an accident with four cars, let's say, or it doesn't have to be four cars, it can be just one. But <laughs> let's say a person gets into a car crash, but God keeps them alive. That's being merciful to the person because if god could have taken their life their life any minute but god kept them alive okay that's a good example Lev. in the car crash and god saved your life you know from a big car crash but here it's a very interesting thing it says in verse 14 Making their lives bitter, hard labor, digging clay, making bricks, all kinds of field work. And all this toil, they were shown no mercy. You think the people of Israel were crying out to God? What do you think, Sheva? You think they, they were crying out to God, Sheva? What do you think? You know what crying is? Yeah. Yes, you think yes? Yes. Why wasn't God listening to their prayer? What do you think? Were they listening to God? No. Oh, they weren't. Okay, so they weren't listening to God. They were not listening to God. What happens when you don't listen to mommy or daddy? Oh. 
Oh, what happens? Say it. You give pow pow. You like pow pow? No. You don't like getting pow pow every day? No. Why? What what happens? It hurts, right? It hurts. Oh, okay. All right. So here, let's see. Marley, you think the people of Israel are crying out to God? Yes. Why didn't God listen to them? Because they disobeyed. How many times did they disobey? Like five times? Fifteen? I don't know. Well, they probably disobeyed a lot, right? Yes. But isn't, isn't the Israelites his people? Yes, but at least they, um, at least God said that he would send someone to help them out. Well, this is the beginning of this is the beginning of the 400 years. They got 400 years ago so you imagine being your whole life as a slave never never leaving your life as a slave okay you're crying out to god god said you know what you want to listen to me beforehand not going to listen to you now Well, this is near the end of the 400 years. What would you feel like? I'd feel sad. You gotta put your mouth near the microphone. I'd feel sad. Feel sad. You weren't li so you're you're crying out to God, but you weren't listening in the first place. So why are you talking to him now? Well, that's Shazad. You answer the question. No, he was saying something. Okay, Shazad, what are you saying? I'm here, man. <laughs> well, I mean, you might like try to ask to the slave master to just tell them to stop. You really think? Probably this not, but it, could, it might be possible. Might be possible, but what if the if you tell him to stop and the guy goes, "Stop! I'm going to hit you even more now because you told me to stop." Oh no! You couldn't call the police because you're a slave. And then God says, "You know, I'm not listening. To you. you didn't want to listen to me. Now you got to listen to these bad people because you didn't want to listen to me." See, the God of Abraham's in charge of everything. He made the universe. He even made you, Shazad. He made you with your funny hair. He even made Mar 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 Marley there. I don't think he made Adrian. I think Adrian was hatched from an egg. <laughs> Okay, so now, um, now, now we're going to move on to the next part, guys. Now we're going to move on to the next part. So we're shown no mercy because we didn't want to listen. So God says, you know what? You don't want to listen? Here what happens. I'm not listening. You don't want to listen to me? So now, who wants to read that part? Once read verse 15 through 17. Gadiel, verse 15 through 17. Let me unmute you. Go ahead. The king of the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives of home. home. The name 
of the was Jera. Um, and the name of the other Pua. 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 And he said, when you perform the dusty of a, the duty of a midwife to the Hebrew woman and see them of the birth stool, if it is a son, then you sh shall kill him. But if it is a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives wives feared God and didn't didn't do what the king of Egypt commanded them. Put put but save the baby boys' lives. Baby boys alive. Okay, thank you, Yadiel. Okay, so now King of Egypt, Pharaoh, is saying you know, uh, these uh, Jews, these Hebrews are uh, having babies. And these, you know, so he says to the, the midwives, that's a, a, a woman who helps other women deliver babies. Okay, that we even have midwives today in our, in the, in the world um, that help women deliver babies. They're like, they're, they're like doctors, but they only, they only do babies. They don't, they only help deliver babies. They're, they help that. Okay, um, so we, the, the Pharaoh says, you know, kill the babies, kill the babies, kill the babies. Victoria, what do you think of that? Pharaoh's saying, kill the baby boys. Kill the, why would he say just kill the baby boys and not the baby girls? Um, well, well, he just wanted to like, stop the hebrews from having babies so he had to figure out like a way to make them stop and i guess one of his ideas was to kill the baby boys how's it gonna stop the israelites from having babies it's just well no it's just like gonna um like the population isn't gonna be as much because if you keep killing the baby boys then you know the population isn't going to grow so it's only going to be like girls and not many hebrews well you know we're still going to be having babies i mean look at the man jarrah's until asher was born they had three girls even a girl cat <laughs> yeah but um, I just think that he just wanted to, he couldn't think of another way of doing, like, reducing the population, I guess. So you so. just think this is just population control? Um, well, I guess the population of Hebrews. Those girls are still being born. All right. Yeah, but I don't know. I just think that. All right, Ali May and then Mia. Ali May and then Mia. The reason that they're not killing the girls, but they're killing the boys, is because the girls. Can I get closer to your mic. Wait, what? Can I get closer to your mic. You and your Ninja Turtle blanket. Um, the reason that the girls are not being killed, but the boys are, is because the boys, when they grow up, they will, if there are enough of them and they want to, then they'll, they could probably fight the Egyptians, and that's what they're scared of. But the girls can't fight the Egyptians. Girls can't fight the Egyptians, Ellie Mae? Girls aren't allowed to fight. <laughs> Girls aren't allowed to fight. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you, you know, grab a gun and start shooting the Egyptians, Ellie Mae? Yeah, 
guess. But, I mean, like, they didn't have guns then. Oh, bow and arrow? You can't shoot a bow and arrow? Haven't you shot a bow and arrow? Yes. You're thinking the, the girls are not going to raise up and raise an army? No, probably not. No? Aren't a, a group of girl warriors like Ali Mae? Ali Mae believes a troop of green shirted girls. Yeah. That was a pretty good answer, Ali Mae. Mia had her hand up. I think, yeah, Ali is correct on like on like her her part about yeah, like with more with more men or boys. They'd be able to like protect the families and like fight the Egyptians, I guess you could say, or raising an army. <laughs> but it could also be also the part about the actual thing of having kids. It's not just the woman who can have a baby herself, but it's also the man that both both parents, both people are needed for for to have a child. So if the boys are gone, it will cause a decline in the population. So the Egyptians think it's popular. The Egyptians are thinking, oh, then they're, they're going to get less powerful because they're not going to have any more kids. Basically, population control. Population control? Well, didn't Yaakov had two wives and two concubines? Yeah. And didn't Abraham have, have six more kids at the age of 120? I think he was over 120 at that point. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty old then, but he was still... Being able to have more children, but mm -hmm. Sarah, you know, was old, and it was a miracle to have a baby at that age. Yeah, she had one. Lev's got her hand up. We we even have three. We even have four boys. No, Dad, Asher, the hamsters. They're boys. <laughs> I right, know things are leveling out in the Manjara Telco. Yeshua, why do you think Pharaoh said kill the boys? Because because the 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 when the Hebrew people were growing big and big, and then they'll be against the Egyptians. I mean, the boys, what about the girls? Why can't the girls be against the Egyptian? Because they don't have any strength, only the boys. The boys, <laughs> or the boys, they go big and big and big and powerful that they'll team up with their enemies, with their other enemies, and they'll fight the Egyptians. Oh, all right, everybody. We're going to come to the end of our class here. Be talking about this more tomorrow about what's going on with slavery. Let me get you all on my screen here. Close our day in some prayer. I am thinking of a number from one to ten. Hey, Ali May the Turtle had her hand up first. Uh, six. You are completely wrong. Marley? Ten. You are completely wrong. Lev? I'm guessing... One? You are completely wrong. Java? Nine? You are completely wrong. Yeshua? Eight. You are completely right. Thank you, Lord, for the stay for giving us and for please that that we could do good and that we could help 
people that that are sick and you should name Amen. Amen. Shalom, everybody. Have a great day. Your assignment, Marley.